Good evening and welcome. Welcome to Candy Crew Team Training. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. This is our Monday night team hangout training, whatever we want to make it. So tonight we have a really special guest. This is Travis Flaherty for those of you that haven't met him. And for those that have, I don't need to do any more edifying, but he and some are just so special to Kevin and I. They are our sponsors. They are who introduced this to us. And I mentioned that I have something that I wanted to share. And rather than me rambling on tonight, I found something. Oh boy. That I want to share with everybody. So <laughs> from the time that Summer and I first got married, we had a discussion about where we wanted to go in life. You know, you wouldn't wake up in the morning and grab your car keys and get in your car and just start driving without knowing where you're headed, but that's how most people live their lives. And so we talked about where we wanted to go and what was important to us. And the most important thing was our time. We wanted to be able to do the things that we wanted to do rather than the things that we had to do. I've always had this problem with somebody else buying my efforts wholesale, going out and selling my efforts retail, making money off of me, building their future at the expense of my own. And so we knew we were going to be entrepreneurs very early on. I love network marketing because I can't even believe I'm saying that actually, because I got to tell you the first time Travis came home and said he joined it. Yes. Everyone lives a life and they have a life and they go to work and they, you know, do what they do after work and they have their hobbies and activities. But I feel like network marketing has allowed us to be able to live the life that we want to live, the things and do the things that are important to us. And of course we have to work and of course we work really hard. And of course it gets really crazy and there's stress involved and, and there's all the things that are involved with any business that you would have. I mean, with our first three children, we did own gyms and we had people want to work out in the morning before work and after work. So what does that mean? He's getting up at the crack of dawn before the kids are awake. He's going, opening the gym. We never really found that true freedom in our traditional business because we had employees, we had overhead, we had, you know, an office that I had to be at every single day. I was always away from my family. I look back and I see how crazy that was and we were happy and we did it. That's what we knew. But now I look at how we are now. Tuscany, our fourth child, she was the first child that we were able to have and Travis be home for the whole thing. When I looked at network marketing, what I found, what we found was an opportunity to be able to truly go build something over a period of a couple of years, a residual income stream that would give us back our most valuable commodity that we have, which is our time. We believe wholeheartedly in entrepreneurialism and free enterprise and capitalism and we use our business to educate our children in those areas. My son Chandler spoke on stage at his first event when he was 11 years old about financial freedom from a child's perspective and what it means to have his mom and dad at home every day. For us, it's about creating amazing life experiences with the people that we love and care about most, and that's our family. What's money for if you can't make memories with your family and be together? We are a family first in everything that we do. And it's that love of family that um, at the end of the day matters most to us. I'm Summer Flaherty. I am a wife. I am a mother. I am a dreamer. I am a team builder. I am a supporter. And I am a network marketing professional. I am Travis Flaherty. I am a father. I am a husband. I'm a visionary. I'm a servant leader. I'm a dealer in hope and I'm a network marketing professional. Ladies and gentlemen, my wish for you is that you will decide to become a network marketing professional. You'll decide to go pro. Because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. <laughs> so I just had to share that because I can't beat that. And I feel like all of us should watch that at least once. It just, they've come so far even from that point. So I'm going to do enough praising and edification over here and pass the microphone over to Travis. And he has a really great training in store for you guys tonight. Well, thank you very much. It was fun to watch that video. 
Um, so that video, I think, was maybe 2013, 14, somewhere in there, probably 14. And um, we were so excited because Eric Worre reached out to us and said that he was doing this Better Way series and he wanted to send film crews and follow us around. And uh, at first, it, the video, I didn't like it because there was all this food in it. And, it, and I was like, holy cow, people are just going to think like that's all we do is eat. But the more that I watch it now, it actually is perfect because if you know us, you know that that's like, I mean, I inherited from my mom. I'm like the patriarch of our family and we get together around food. Like that's just what we do. We get together around food all the time. We're always in the kitchen. Sunday dinners are a big deal at my home. And so anyways, that was a fun video to shoot and it's fun to watch that. I haven't seen that actually in a while. So it's cool to see. Um, all right. Well, thank you for being here. First of all, I just want to give a shout out to Kevin and Sarah, the leadership team here at the Candy Crew. Um, these two are two of the, the most heart driven, relentless, consistent leaders uh, that we have on the team. And you guys are very fortunate to have them. Speed of the leader dictates the pace of the pack. And uh, Kevin and Sarah show up every single day, day in and day out, top recruiters in the company. Um, they just get done. So I want to I want to give a shout out to them. Today, I want to talk to you, and you may have heard some of this information, but I believe that you can never hear it enough. I want to, I want to talk tonight about um, the power of our compensation plan as it relates to the uniqueness in the marketplace. I do believe that as network marketing professionals, right, that's what that video is about, is being network marketing professionals, you do need to understand how our compensation plan competes in the marketplace. You, you should be able to have a conversation about why it is special and what are the selling points and be able to explain it, not so much in, in as much detail as I'm going to go into tonight, but also just in a matter of two or three minutes, if somebody said, what are the standouts of your compensation plan, what would you say? And so I want to talk a little bit about that. And then we'll, we'll talk about how that kind of um, related to the launch strategy and having a business plan or a game plan to launch your business or to launch your distributors or to relaunch your business. As you guys may know, September, October, November is the best time of the year in network marketing. There's no better time. I mean, summertime, kids are out of school, people are traveling, people are busy, things are going on. But as kids go back to school, it's just historically, September, October, and November have always been the best months of network marketing. There could not be a better time to recommit, relaunch your business than right now and really make a true commitment or even a 90-day game plan. Um, you can change the world in 90 days in your network marketing. So you can um, with a one 90-day run, one push, right? You can't run forever. You can't sprint forever. I mean, if you think about it, you were to go out and start sprinting right now. I probably wouldn't make it 30 yards before <laughs> I'd be out of breath, but we can sprint for short periods of time. And this business is built around bursts of energy. And every time that you give it a new burst and you give it new life, you kind of raise the altitude of your business a little bit. And so, you know, I think that that is, from my perspective, I kind of have a unique bird's eye view of the, of the entire organization. I believe that's what's needed right now in our business is it's time for... Uh, us to, to step up and really push for the next 90 days. It's time to, to, to kind of uh, collectively as a team, raise the bar and push it uh, to the next, to, the, to new heights. And that's what we're uh, encouraging and inviting you to do. So with that, I want to just give you a brief history of compensation plans for a moment so that you understand high level and then you understand um, really how we fit into the, to the, to, to, to the variety of different compensation plans that are out there. So first of all, everything started off as what's called a unilevel. A unilevel just means one, right? One level, unilevel. And if you were talking about back in the Amway days where it all started, right? And you had other comp plans and companies that came after it, Herbalife, these type of companies. They were all centered around the concept that if you sponsored more than one person, they would all be considered frontline and you could sponsor three people, you could sponsor 30 people, 300 people, whatever. They're all going to be on your first level. Typically, these unit levels paid down for us through a certain amount of levels, usually somewhere around six or seven levels. And um, what would happen is, is as you sponsored one person, they would go right here. The next person would go right here. And the challenge with the unit level compensation plan 
is that they're very shallow. So they required you to go really, really wide. If you wanted to make a lot of money in these plans, I mean, you really need to go sponsor hundreds of people into the organization. And the challenge with that is, is let's say that somebody came in, you know, you sponsored your first person that's on your level one, and they went and sponsored someone, they went and sponsored someone. And all of a sudden down here on level nine, you had a rock star that came into your business and they went out and built a multi-million dollar business. The challenging thing is, is that you would not make any money because it was outside of your pay levels. And that was a disheartening situation to be in. So that's one of the disadvantages is that they're very shallow, which requires you to keep all the volume high and tight. But the other challenge that with Unilevels that I don't love is that when I sponsor my first distributor and then my second, my third, and my fourth, they're in direct competition with each other. There's not really a synergy there at all. And so usually, and, and back in the older days, in the 80s and the 90s, it was a big deal if somebody was making $100,000 a year in network marketing, typically with these Unilevel compensation plans. Well, what happened is somebody came out with a new plan called a binary. Binary refers to binary two, right? So binaries worked like this. Started off with you at the top, and then you would start off by going and sponsoring two people. You'd put one person on your left, one person on your right. And then as you continue to build your organization, you would continue to sponsor down the outside left or the outside right of your organization. And these people that you're putting into the business, they would also share a leg. So they would also contribute to the leg. And then they would all start building their insides. So this person would start going to the inside. He shares this leg. So there's some commonality there. This did a couple of things. First of all, it created this crazy sense of urgency that never existed before. And what I mean by that is I could say, hey, Jenny, listen, uh, I am talking to this superstar right now named Kevin. And they haven't enrolled into the business yet, but you know, they're going to be coming in over the next one to two days. If you choose to get started right now and you get a position, as soon as Kevin and Sarah join, they're going to come into my next available position, which means that they would be in your organization as well. So here's the deal, Jimmy. If you wait a couple of days, no problem, but Kevin and Sarah are going to come in and probably a lot of other people. So my question to you, Jimmy, is, is do you want to be in Kevin and Sarah's organization or do you want Kevin and Sarah in your organization? Do you see the sense of urgency there and the power of just creating urgency? So people, you could leverage that. And in fact, there were all kinds of strategies that were focused around um, the binary. One, one in particular was called, they called it depth charging. So if you had a leader that was getting ready to be placed into your organization, well, what happened is, is let's say that, um, you know, the, the leader was coming in down here where well, you would call this person, this person, this person above you and say, hey, listen, I'm getting ready to place someone. I'm going to be putting them in tomorrow into our main leg. If you were to place someone anywhere on this main leg in the next 24 hours, they'll instantly have someone below them. Sorry. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I apologize. Use your phone if it's not. So, so anyways, there was a lot of strategies that created a strong sense of urgency um, and fear of loss. The other benefit of a binary was you could now get paid for the first time ever through infinity. So literally, you could get paid all the way down thousands of levels of deep into the organization. Basically, what a binary does is, is they look at your left team, team one, and your right team, team two, and they add up all of the sales of all of the community on your first team and all of the sales on your second team. And what they do is, is they pay you, on average, in the industry, 10% of all of the sales of whichever leg was your lesser leg. So every week or every single month, they would add up the sales. Well, here's the challenge with the binary. By the way, this reigned throughout what I call the juice level. So Monavi, Zri, Zija, Zango, all these crazy names and all these juices, they were operating on binaries. So here's what happened. They reigned for a long time until they didn't. And what, what eventually happened is, as these companies were no longer in momentum, they weren't putting in a ton of people anymore, and they kind of hit more of a stabilization. They started realizing that there was a tremendous amount of attrition. People that were going out the back door just as quickly as people were coming in the front door. In fact, sometimes even more so. So eventually what happened is, is you would have somebody who would come in on an inside of an inside leg somewhere. And let's call this person Aunt Betty. Aunt Betty comes into the business. She's excited. She joins. 
and she puts in three people. She puts maybe two on her left, one on her right. Well, here's what would happen. Let's say this person over here quits. This one over here starts to build a good business and goes and builds a massive organization. Unfortunately, the way the binaries work is you get paid 10% of your lesser leg. So what ended up happening is, is you have a lot of people and I want you to drop a seven in the comments if you've ever experienced this before, where you've had one leg with a volume, a runaway leg, and you had absolutely no volume on the other side. It's almost, if anybody that's worked a binary has experienced this before. And so eventually what happens is, is this person here gets frustrated. They're like, man, I've got a lot of volume on one side, but I'm not making any money. So eventually what happens is, is this person quits, and by the way, that volume is flowing upwards. It's flowing up to the next leader. So this person here is making money on all of this volume. So what a binary usually creates is a leader with a big check and then a bunch of zeros, a leader with a big check and a bunch of zeros. So these guys start to leave and it starts to fall apart from the bottom up. And I've seen that happen over and over and over again in this industry. So what happened was there's a company or by the name of Organo Gold. And by the way, the binary was the first time that we started to see people go from six figures per year to seven figures per year in the industry. So we started to see $100,000 a month earners, which was a big deal. Well, then Organo Gold came along and said, we want the best of both worlds. Why can't we create a hybrid plan that does both? It gives us the excitement of the binary, the synergy of a binary, but it gives the stability of the unilevel exactly what created so they created a plan that looked like this front all of the new coming in the door so all the new enrollment packs were paid out in a buy so they still had the speed the sense of urgency the excitement the ability to be able to be paid through infinity but everything after that moved over to the unit level so now you have all of your repeat auto ship orders here we call them regular activity orders were paid out in a unit level. So now, and this is the most, and I'll give you an example of why this is important. So the same scenario where let's say that Aunt Betty comes into the organization somewhere down here, sponsors three people and only one builds the business and she's not making any money. With a unit level, here's what happens. I'm getting a little feedback here, let me mute out. Uh, I don't think I can. All right, there we go. All right, I think we got it muted. So here's what happens. With this type of plan, that same person, if she were to go sponsor three people and only one builds an, a, a, an organization, she can still go earn four to five figures per month on that one line. So it protects her. And so what ends up happening is, is you have more meaningful checks that are paid out throughout the entire organization. That leads to retention. Retention is the name of the game. I want you to think about this from this perspective as a business owner, okay? So let's say there was a study that was done in the Direct Sales Association back in like 2016. And here's what they looked at. How long was the average distributor in the companies that were running at that time, how long was the average distributor staying on auto ship? And sadly, the number was 86 days. That was the magic number. Yep, that's right, 86 days. So think about it from this perspective. When I heard this, I thought, okay, so if I could just keep my distributors or people in my business on auto ship for 180 days, I would double my, my income in one year just by pushing that number out a little bit, right? So you have to start thinking about what keeps people on auto ship. There's all kinds of things. Giving somebody a small victory when they first get it started community and culture, right? The glue of the organization, all of those things. So, but one of the biggest things people on, on or keeps people in the business is if they're receiving a check. It's been proven that if somebody's receiving a $57 check, I have friends, I kid you not, that have been Mal in Malaluka from 20 years ago. They still receive an $87 check. And you know what? They are still on auto ship in that company, still buying laundry detergent just because they're getting a very small check and they never leave. It is proven that if somebody is getting a check, they stick around. So this created the ability to get someone to one million per month. Holton Bugs was making a million dollars plus per month and then some. 
So what's happened is, is we've seen this progression of compensation plans. Now, where we are today is a variety of hybrids, but then you add in all kinds of fun of the little nuances that add to or create the culture. And that's where we are. So I want you guys to feel very confident that we have an amazing compensation plan. Um, we are a four, a, kind of a, a we are a, a, we're not a binary, but we start off looking like a binary. When everybody gets started, you put one on your left, one on your right to qualify your position. And what I teach is, is I teach people to do one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. All right. In, in fact, it should look like put one on your left, one on your left, one on your right, one on your left, one on your right, five times. Now you have a solid foundation. What's the easiest way to build an empire or to build a house, right? You build it on a solid foundation. Too many people try to put one on one side. Half the time it's a dog or somebody that they make up just to qualify the leg and then they go run and put everybody on their other side. That is building on a shaky foundation and it's not solid. I teach everybody to do the same thing. Two, one on your left, one on your right, do that five times. Now you've got 10 people in your organization. At that point, you should the ability to be able to see now which organization is, is, is working faster or building faster. And then your job is, is just simply to balance the other side. So all you're doing is you're balancing the other side. So, but here's where we kind of get a little different. The reason why we don't refer to ourselves as a binary, and just so you guys, we don't say binary. Uh, today don't like to even merchant binaries because there's been so many challenges with them. We could lose our merchants if we are referring to as binaries in presentation. A binary, we are actually hybrid nine is what the term is. And where the term nine from, and this isn't too important. I'm just going to give you a little hint of it. I don't want you to, to, if you don't understand or follow this, it's not that important right now. But in every binary, there's what's called, which means because they pay through infinity, you could break the bank, right? You could, you could break the company. So they put a cap in place to protect the comp plan. And usually they say that you can only earn a certain amount of money through the binary. So usually a lot of some companies have a 20,000 a month, 30,000 a month, 40,000 a month. I've even seen them go as high as 80,000 a month. Uh, but you have to hit those top ranks in the company to be able to get to some of these higher caps. Well, we have a $40,000, 10,000 a week, so 40,000 per month cap on our binary, on, on a leg. Now, I know that for some of you, Cheryl, Michelle Hilton, I know that you guys, 40000 a month is not going to be enough for you guys. You need to go much higher than that. So what we did is, is they said, okay, once you hit this, you can now open up a third leg and you can build this to 40000 a month. And then when you know that, you can open a fifth leg and a sixth leg and an eighth leg and a ninth leg. And you can build each one of those to 40000 per month. So the total cap in our plan, nine legs wide, is $360,000. So I guess my question would be, would you guys be okay with $360,000 a month is doable for you, Sarah? Like, does that get you at least out of bed morning? At that point? If not, it's okay, because there's, I'm going to show you how you can actually get to a million a month in this plan, but that's how our plan works. We are not a binary, specifically for this reason start off as a two-legged structure. Now, let's talk a little bit about the of compensation plans for a moment because this is really important. So if you were to go sit in, and I've had these conversations, if you go sit in with, getting a little bit of a, wait a second, let me see which Wi-Fi I'm on here. Hang on, this might, okay. So if you were to go sit in on um, conversations with owners that are deciding what comp plan to use when they're starting a company. There's, there's, there's strategy involved, right? They, they want to keep people working. They don't want to pay out too much, but they want it to. So what they do. So they create a series of ranks that you have to go through. And each one, they give you just a little bit more, right? They put these little carrots out there in front of you. Everybody starts off as a, as a contributor. And then if you do a few things, you know, you go sponsor one on your left, one on your right, you're now rank advanced, right? And I'm not going to refer to our ranks. I'm just going to talk generically for a moment. So let's say you hit star, right? This is the first rank. You're doing 2,500 in volume. It's a big deal, celebration. 
And because you get star, maybe there's a $250 bonus attached to it, okay? One-time bonus. Then you keep working really, really hard and you get up to the next rank and maybe it's bronze. And bronze is a little bit more volume. Maybe it's 3,500 in volume. And now what's happening is, is instead of getting paid three levels deep in the new level, maybe they're going to give you a fourth level, okay? So they open up a little bit more of the competition plan. And as you work your way up to the mid-level ranks now, now you're hitting gold and you're hitting even ruby and you're hitting all these ranks now that are starting to get you down into six and seven levels so you're starting to pick up more levels maybe you're starting to pick up a car bonus at 400 dollars a month right here maybe in the binary on the front end you've gone from 10 percent to 12 percent so they're giving you an extra two percent here you keep moving all the way up pretty soon you hit emerald and then you hit diamond right and diamond typically is the goal, right? Whenever I go look at any compensation, I have an objective. My objective is how do I maximize the comp plan? The reason why I ask myself that question is because I look at this as a business and I want to know how can I be the most profitable in my business? Well, I know that I've got to get to this rank. And so then I, now I need to understand what is it, what is required of me to get to that rank? What are the steps that I have to take? What are the Hoops that I have to jump through. Somebody mentioned, I think Kevin said gotchas. What are the gotchas that I have to watch out for? They're like little traps in the plan. And believe it or not, there's traps in every compensation plan. And what a trap will look like is be, gosh, you have two volume at the same time. So sorry, you be in volume, but just didn't count for everybody. You guys hearing me cut out? Somebody's Kevin said I'm cutting out a little bit. Sarah, am I cutting out for you? Okay, hang on a second. Let me see if I can. Your little um, Wi-Fi is in red on the left. Wonder why it's right next to me here. So that's kind of strange. I'm gonna jump over to a different Wi-Fi. Stay with me. Okay. Let's keep going. Let me know if you have any problems. Okay. So, so there's lots of traps and plans. So th this is these these are all um, this is all strategic. But here's what you have to understand. In the earlier ranks, this is where the least amount of money is paid, right here. This is where the least amount of money gets paid out. It's also where 95 to 97% of an organization is. That's where most people in network marketing typically are. Because most people work at part-time, spare time. They don't give it enough time to get themselves up to here. Another fact that you have to take into consideration is this. Not only do you have to hit these ranks, but you've got to keep hitting them. You have to keep requalifying for these ranks. So it's one thing to get up here, right? Michelle, you've been up here to these high ranks, but it's an entirely different ball game to keep having to qualify every single month. So, so this is what's going on in any comp plan. So here's what you need to understand about APL Go. This drove Sergi crazy when he first started network marketing. He thought that it was unethical. He thought that it was... He said, I swear, if I, when he was 19 years old, he was in the same company I was. He was in a company called Agile in 2005. We both started in the same company. I didn't know him, but he came into the industry. And by the time he was 21, he had done very, very well. And he said, I will own a network marketing company one day, and I'm getting rid of all of these gotchas, and I will never do this. I will come up with the best comp plan in the industry. That was something that he made a commitment to himself when he was 21 years old. <clears throat> so what he did... I've never seen this done before in 16 years is he gives everyone an opportunity to be able to come in here or come in here if you want, or come in here if you want. But here's the cool thing. You have an opportunity to upgrade here if you want. You have an opportunity to upgrade here if you want. But once you're here, you never have to requalify again. And this is a really, really big deal. To put it into perspective, we were, some of you were there. We were in Las Vegas. We had a room with about 300 people in the room. It was the most that we could have in the room for COVID. It was one of our early pre-launch events this year. And I asked Dr. Alberto a question. He's one of our consultants. He's the operation for Latin America. I said, let me ask you a question. If you were to take some of these successful companies, I'm talking about doTERRA, I'm talking about Isagenix, I'm talking about Juness, and whatever their name is for their top rank, what percentage is of the entire organization do you think make it to the top? He says, oh, maybe 1%. Now, I think personally that's being generous, but let's say it was 1%. Then I said, okay, now let me ask you another question. 
how many of those people requalify every month at that rank? And he goes, oh, not even half of them. I said, okay, so then we're immediately down to 0.5%. Now, here's the other thing. That 0.5% usually equates to about 80% of the commissions that are being paid out company-wide, 80%. So my question is, how many think that they could get to this 0.5%? Some of you, yes. Yeah. Some of you are like, eh, I don't know, maybe, right? So Sergi says, I want to give everybody an opportunity to be paid like they're in diamonds. I want, and I love that answer. And by the way, every one of you, I want to, I want to hear you say, yeah, I'd get there. It might take me 10 years, but I'd get there, right? But he wanted to give everybody an opportunity to be here. So we're in Las Vegas. And to illustrate this point, I said, okay, if you are a diamond in this room right now, please stand up. 200 out of 300 people stood up in the room. 200 people in that room, just in that small room. Am I wrong? Michelle, you were there. Did you, was it about those numbers are right, correct? 200 out of 300 people stood up in the room. And I did this, this was just that room of 300 people. Now multiply that times 300,000 distributors around the world that APL Go has, and that should give you an idea of the amount of people that are being paid at Diamond. It is the reason why we have one of the top paying comp plans in the industry paying out nearly twice as much as the industry standard. We were the industry standard on the dollar for every dollar that comes in. Um, the industry standard is about 34%, 32 to 34% being paid out in commissions. That's on the dollar, not based on dollar. We paid out 63% last year. 63%. So why is that? Because we have something called the diamond status that allows you to be able to control when you want to maximize the comp plan without ever having to requalify for it again. When I explain this and I go through and meet with leaders in, um, when I go meet with leaders in Latin America and I was in the room meeting with these leaders that have been in the industry and I mean this, you drop. Every time that I go through this, they're like, you're kidding. You mean, I don't ever have to, I can come in the door and I, have to, I can just go diamond on day one if I want to. And I can, I don't have to qualify again. I say, yes. And I don't have to go through all of these traps. I can bypass all of them and just go right here. And there's yes. So here's what I ask prospects. And this is something that you should think about and write down, be able to ask your prospects. If you have one comp plan at company A, right? Let's call it company A. Company A saying, join it. And then if you want, you know, do some You'll be able to become a star, and then you'll be able to become a bronze. And if you keep hard, you'll get to gold. You might fall back and get back to gold, then ruby, and then you might just emerald a few times, and then finally you'll fall back to gold. And then over time, eventually you get to diamonds, which is kind of the pattern for those that make it to the top. Nobody just goes from here to here. Or company B says, "Hey, man, and you could just go to diamond and maximize plan from one." Which company are you choosing, company A or company B? right? B. It makes sense. So this is such a huge, huge selling point. I think if the industry truly understood this, people would be flocking over here just because of this, because they just don't understand what it's like to go through all of this, stepping on landmines, going through all of these challenges. So let's break it down a little further now. So now that you kind of understand why this is such a, a big deal. Let's talk about kind of how it all works and how it all kind of, if you, if it's almost like a, you've ever been to the symphony? Any one instrument sounds okay, but when you put them all together, it's like, man, that's just absolutely amazing. Our comp plan works the same way. So we start off, right? When you first sponsor somebody into the business, bonus or um, I forget what the technical is, but it's a time commission paid when you enroll somebody into the business. And we have different packs, right? So, you know, you can start off at 100 bucks, you can start off at 200 bucks, you can start off at 600, you can go up to 1800, 3000. Okay. So these are the different packs. And when you enroll, you can earn a one time commission, starts off, you know, 10 bucks, not a big deal. But as you keep going and you go all the way through, you can go all the way to $600 every time that you bring somebody into the business or some variation of anywhere in between, okay? 
I'm sorry, I don't have my PDF right in front of me, but you get you can look at the one-time commissions that depending on where somebody starts. But it's up to six hundred dollars. The business it's a first order bonus. Now here's what you have to understand: when you are coming, you are making a big decision, and it's not just. And you need to be able to explain this to your process. This is super important. They're not just picking a certain amount of product, right? If, if, if we give everybody a choice, people will always choose the path of least resistance. You go, you know that, right? People will always choose the path of least resistance. So you have to build the value because dollars always follow value. You have to give people an explanation of why there's different choices. First of all, I kind of like to explain it this way when I'm meeting with somebody who's coming in business. So what I might say is, look, we've got a couple of options, a hundred dollar and a two hundred dollar option, and they're good for somebody who kind of want to dip their dip their toe in the water. You know, maybe, you know, I kind of call it a customer, even though they really are coming in and selecting the distributor kit. You know, they're getting four packs, they're getting eight packs, just kind of person give them a product for personal consumption. Okay. Then we've got some packs that are kind of middle of the road, right? Those are the people that are like, you know, this, this is um, the average person coming into the business, 400, 600. I'd always stress, I always stress pushing, saying, look, get to the 600 if you can, because that's going to push you to 25% when it comes to your commissions. And I'll show you guys that in just a minute. And then we have our pro packs. And our pro packs, and I, I literally do this. I will draw a line. When I'm explaining this to my prospect, I draw a line and I say, let me have our pro packs. And our pro packs are not for everybody. I say this up front. They're not for everybody. They're for people that are looking to go fast and they're looking to go make some serious money in this plan. Now, when I steer that, what do you think goes through the prospect's mind? I want to go fast and I want to make some money. And then I ask them, are you looking to go slower or are you looking fast? They say, oh, I'm, I'm looking to go fast. Okay. Well, then these are probably the best kits for you. And let me explain why. Now, this is the conversation that I have with my prospects. Um, so when you, what you need to understand is when you're enrolling, you're not just choosing a kit, you're choosing a status. That status is basically, where do you want to be on that chart that I just shared with you? Where do you want to be on that chart? Do you want to be down here as a star or bronze or gold? In our case, it's manager or whatever the case might be. Do you want to be a corporate director? Do you want to be paid like a premier director at the top? And so you're choosing a status, right? So um, Sarah, what's a hundred call? I forget what the hundred is called. I just call it a customer usually, but what's the hundred and two hundred call? I know? think they just call it, um, they call it associate. Okay, so associate, right? And then 600 is mentor, I know that. So it's, um, they have the builder is 200, the associate or associate is 200, builder is 400. Mentor is 600, VIP is 18, and we know Diamond. Okay, and that. So you're choosing a status. That status determines how much you're going to earn in a couple of different areas. So we talked earlier about how everything, all first quarters, all new packs, all new enrollment packs that come in are going to be paid out on what's called a group bonus. The group bonus is now, it's no longer just you getting a one-time commission. You're getting paid on the group, the whole group, okay? Everybody in your organization, including people that fall into your organization. So remember, you have start off with team one over here, left team, team two over here, right team. And what happens is, is you start off, and as the team starts to grow, they're going to add up the volume that's created on both of these teams. And every week... They're going to calculate both teams and they're going to pay you a percentage. And that percentage is going to be based on your status. So if I start off here, I'm at 10% as an associate at the $100 level. Then I go to 15%. Then I go to 25%. At VIP, I'm at 30. And Diamond, I'm at 30. So you can see how just going to VIP or diamond right out of the gate is going to put you at the maximum amount of payout on the group bonus. Now, here's the cool thing. You never have to qualify again. So even if you started, and the reason why I always tell people at least try to start at the 600 is because you're going to get one of each kit, so you get to try everything, but it at least gets you to that 25% number, right? You're short, you're just short of the 30%. And here's why, because I want to, if you're, if you're a, sponsor, you're sponsoring somebody, 
your objective is to help that person have a success story right out of the gate. You want to give them a small victory. The way I look at it is, is if I work with somebody in the first month and they go sponsor a few people and their team starts to grow, I want them getting 25% commission, not 10% commission, because it's going to be more meaningful. It's going to get them more excited. It's going to help them build their story. So me, I always try to say, look, if you can at least get yourself to the $600 level, then we can work on upgrading. But what you need to understand, and everybody needs to understand this, is our entire plan is built around getting to diamonds as quickly as you can. It doesn't have to happen all at once. Financial, that's a lot of money. I told you, if you can't do it, it's okay. But the goal is, is to get yourself here so that you're paid like one of those top distributors. It's like me asking you, if you wanted to go put 10000 in volume in your organization, do you want to make $1,000 or do you want to make $3,000 for the same effort in the same volume? Right, So it allows you to be able to get paid the way that only a half a percent or less of distributors are getting paid at every other company. So that's what you have to understand. So, so you have your first order bonus, you have your group commissions, your percentages are based on your status, and there's a few other little areas. And one of the things that you're going to see us doing starting in September is you're going to start seeing a lot more chat about our ranks. We haven't pushed ranks very much in this plan. And the reason for that was there was, in my opinion, a little bit of a flaw in the plan. If you came in at Diamond, you automatically were called a managing director in the back office. And it skipped all the first three or four ranks. It was kind of a perk to become a Diamond. The challenge is those are the most important ranks. Those are the most important ranks. So what was happening is, is it kind of devalued all of these ranks, which is what, when somebody new starts, the first month, we want them running for that first rank. Then we want to help them get to that second rank. And we want to celebrate those ranks. And that's something that we haven't had an opportunity to do because of the way that the previous plan was functioning out of Europe and because we haven't had the reports in the back office. You're going to see in September those things changing a little bit and ranks are going to start coming into play. And we're really going to start celebrating ranks because now when someone comes in as a diamond, they're no longer going to get the automatic title of the director. They're still going to get the perks, but they're not going to get the rank that goes with. So the only other place, there's a, there's a few other areas. There's two other areas that I want to talk about how you get paid, okay? There's a number of different ways that you can earn in this plan, right? It's like walking into your job and going, hey, listen, you know what? I'm tired of just getting paid hourly. I want to come up with like seven or eight other ways that I can get paid. Like, can we come up with some other bonuses too? So not only do I get paid on just my hourly, but I get paid on the collective effort of the team for through group commissions. And then I'd like to maybe have a check match, you know, people that I help in the organization, whatever they make, I'd like to be able to get a check match on that as well. And then, you know what, I'd like to be able to get some long-term residual out of the people that come into the business. Wouldn't that be cool if we could walk into our employer and have that conversation? Well, you can in this plan. So we've talked about two ways that you get paid. We've talked about a first order bonus. We've talked about group commissions, the group commissions that pay 10%. The first thing that you, way you get paid is called a check match. And the check match is really, really cool because there's you, everybody who's personally enrolled. This part of the plan is going to be on your level. The check match pays down. I, don't, I need to look at this. I think it's six levels, not seven. Pays down six levels. Six levels or seven? Sarah, do you have the document right in front of you? Six levels until you hit um, national director and then it's seven. That's where it goes seven. So six levels. Well, let me explain how a check match works because this is going to get some of you excited. So I sponsored Kevin and Sarah. I'm fortunate enough to, to, to sponsor Kevin and Sarah into the business. Kevin and Sarah came in and made over 10 grand in their first month. Well, because I sponsored them and they're on my first level for this check match, we pay out a 20% check match on first level. So because they earned 10 grand, I got a $2,000 bonus. Now, I've sponsored, you know, I don't know, 70 or so people into the business, 65, 70 people into the business. So I'm getting a 20% check match on all of those people that I sponsor, whatever they earned in the group bonus. But it doesn't stop there. Let's say Kevin and Sarah go sponsor Alicia. And Alicia makes some money. Well, guess what? I get 10% of whatever Alicia makes into the business. But it doesn't stop there. It actually goes down. You can earn a total of six levels. And once you hit one of the 
the top ranks or the higher ranks, you can actually pick up levels or seventh level below that. So this can become quite lucrative. It's pretty easy to get to the 20 and the 10%. Uh, those are the first couple ranks in the plan. So you just go out and get a couple of people and you're qualified to earn 20%. But here's the thing. As your team develops, you can earn a lot of money here in this plan. I mean, imagine this. Imagine, let's say that in my six levels, I have 2,500 people. And every time that they get a check, I earn somewhere from the next level is 5%, the next level is 5%, then 3%, and then 2%. So I have an opportunity to earn anywhere from 2% to 20% of every single check that is issued every single week in our compensation plan. Pretty crazy, right? That's on top of the group sales that are happening, team commissions, and on top of anybody that I'm sponsoring. So that's the third way that you get paid. Now, the fourth way is very important because this is where your long-term residual income comes from. It is called the U level. And the U level is all of the regular activity repeat orders that happen from that point forward. So here's you. Everybody in your organization is front that you've sponsored is front level to you. The unit level pays down six levels. And it starts like this. You get paid 5% on level one. So 5% here. Then it goes, I'll just do 5% here, then six, then seven, then eight, then nine, then 10%. Now, why is it cool that it gets bigger as it goes down? Because as it goes down, your organization gets bigger. Most companies actually do it the opposite. If you look at any unit level, you can go look at any unit level in this industry, they actually start with a higher number on top, and then they pay you less as your organization gets bigger. So that's actually really cool that, that APL Go does that. Another thing that Sergi didn't like, it is flipped. And, it, and if you do the numbers on this, once your organization develops out, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars in difference just because the higher eight, nine, 10% are here. But watch this, if I'm a diamond, I'm 10% on every level for life. 10% for life. You won't find a unit level in this industry that pays 10% on every level. You just, you just won't find it. So let me put it all together. I talked about a symphony earlier. Okay, here's how it, it works. Imagine you're at the, you know, you're at the symphony and the cello starts playing. So this is the cello up here, right? So the cello starts playing. That's the only thing that you hear. And that's when you first sponsoring somebody into the business, you can earn up to 600 bucks, one, one time commission. If you're new, that's where your check's going to come from. But those new people, they're going to start coming in and you're going to help them and teach them and and, and work with them. And all of a sudden they're going to get some people and now you're going to have a group. And so now the bass starts kicking in or I don't know, whatever the violin kicks in. So now you're starting to get paid some money on your group sales. Hopefully you're working your way to get to that 30%. So at the lead, hopefully you're at the mid 25 to start with. So now you're going to start earning some money, not just on your efforts, but the collective efforts of the community. That's where the residual, that's, that's what network marketing is about, right? And then the next, then the check match. Once the group starts to grow, you start to develop some leaders, right? And you get some, some, some leaders that start emerging. Well, guess what happens now? I don't know. I'm, I'm running out of instruments right now. I'm not creative. The oboe kicks in. I, I don't even know what an oboe is. But let's say the oboe kicks in, right? So now you've got these three all playing together because now the check match starts kicking in. It's kind of interesting. Now you've got, you've been around long enough that your unit levels grow. You start having people place in their regular activity orders. And all of a sudden you have this beautiful compensation plan, this beautiful sound that's better as you go to develop your organization. Saxophone. I love the saxophone. So that is how our comp plan works. And then to add some other really fun little whipped cream and cherry on top, they've got little bonuses that once you hit some of the higher ranks, you can earn anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 a month, every month, just lifestyle bonuses to go do whatever you want to do. Um, you know, once you've been on auto ship for 12 months consecutively without turning it off, there's other little bonuses that they'll pay you. So there's all kinds of fun little, little bonuses that are going on, but that's our plan works and everything is centered around that diamond status it truly makes our plan unique and at the very least i mean i don't expect you to go do what i did what i want you to understand and be able to explain is look in any other plan you've got to go through all of these ranks to get to the top to maximize the plan 
Here, you have the ability to go and go over the top. In any other plan, you've got to work your way to become a diamond. In our plan, you can choose to go diamond right from the very beginning. In any other plan, you've got a handful of people that are earning 80 to 90% of the commissions. Here, that is spread out because we have so many people being paid at diamonds. That is going to help you with your retention. Your retention is how you build true walkway income. So just some things to be thinking about. Um, the only the last thing I'm going to leave you guys with tonight is this. So, you know, I, I, if you've heard me say this before, if you've been on any of my trainings, most people join a business, but very few people launch a business. Most people join, very few, few people launch. I want you to, I want to, I want to try and put you inside of my head for a minute of, of, and it's kind of scary, put you inside of my head of what was going through my mind in the first 30 days that I launched APL Go. Like, what was I thinking? What was going on? So I already shared with you the whole first thing that was going through my mind, which was how do I maximize the top plan? When I realized that, and it took me truthfully like a, maybe three, four weeks before it clicked. And I was like, wait a second, so I can go diamond and that's all I need to do to get to the top. And they're like, yes. I'm like, okay, done. I'm diamond, right? So I, I went diamond and I right out of the game wanted to maximize the top plan. I needed the product anyways. So I wanted to go out and start being very generous with my product. So the first thing was, how do I max the top plan? That question was answered. Then I said, okay. I said, this summer, if we're going to do this, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this bigger than anything that I've ever done before. Like, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this. So we need to have a game plan, right? Like, if you go watch football that's starting this week and you watch the football team, they all have a playbook every week for the teams they're playing. I needed a playbook. So this is my playbook. So I said, okay. I took some poster board sheets of paper, like the ones that you flip over, big ones, ripped them off, put, put three or four of them on my wall. And the first one was just literally my names. And I spent one full day, maybe even a weekend, staring at that sheet. And I was going through all my names on my phone, um, all my emails, everybody on Facebook. I even went back and Facebook has a resource that you can go back two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, and even to the month and you can see what you posted. And I looked at who was interacting with me five years ago because it's totally different people that are interacting with me today. So I went through all of that and I just kept putting names on the paper. And every time I come into my office, I'd kind of stare at it and I'd get on the computer and I'd see a name. I'm like, oh, and I'd walk over and I'd put it on the name. So that was the first thing. The second sheet of paper was, I called it in process. So this was in process. So when I got started, my objective was to get these people in process. I needed to move them from this sheet to this sheet. That's how my brain works. I have to like physically see it. So I'm like, you always see me with a whiteboard. I needed to move them from here to here. Then the third thing was, um, and, I, and I had next to the name what I sent them. And then the third thing is I had one through 20. So I numbered one through 20 with a line next to him. And I put a deadline in myself and I said Friday at noon. And this represented, I was launching on a Monday morning. By Friday at noon, I had made a commitment that I would fill my top 20 inches of my structure. 20. So if you looked at what it looks like, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I have the same thing on the other side. Ten on my left, ten on my right. I was going to start with an even foundation, and um, I was going to literally just ten on my left, ten on my right. So my goal was to start, move these people, put them in process, and I was going to sponsor twenty people by Friday at noon. And the reason why I was going to do that is first of all, you have to have a deadline because I had to give myself a deadline. Otherwise, there's no, there's no accountability, right? You can't hit a bullseye without having a target. The second thing is, is it put me into a different mindset. Like there was a different level of urgency, right? Without all urgency, value is lost. So for me, I had to have this sense of urgency in every conversation that I was having with people and they needed to sense it. So from here, I narrowed it down to probably my top 50 or so. So I had maybe 300, 400 names on here. And I highlighted the top 50. These are the people that I felt that if I had my choice, I would want them in my business first, right? And then from there, my goal was over the next, 
for hours to get that 50 in process. I was going to reach out to them some way, somehow, some, and I had a number of different methods, right? If they were hot marked, I usually just send them a text, something like this. Hey, Kevin and Sarah, do you guys have some time to connect today? I have something important that I want to talk to you about, right? And if Karen and Sarah got that text, they're going to go, sure. Why don't you give us a call at 11 o'clock today? Or to it, I texted. I remember I texted my my. Um, he did say now. <laughs> tell me now. Okay, so he did say tell me now. So I texted my friend Pat and I said, "Hey, uh, Pat, do you have some time to connect today? I have something important I'm going to talk to you about." He said, "Sure, give me a call at two o'clock." Right. So started texting them. Another thing that I started doing, and I did more for the top fifty. It was I texted them first, set an appointment to get on a phone call with them, and so with that, I got on the phone call and I just said, "Look, here's what's happening right now." nine-year-old company, and I had my hot points like down. I knew what they were going to be, my bullet points, right? So nine-year-old company, done over $250 million in sales. They um, have become a phenomenon over the last five years in Europe. They have people that are earning $100,000 a week who've never done network marketing before. And... They're just now getting ready to open in the USA and the best part, nobody knows about them. Those are my points. So I knew what my five points were that I would say. And this whole discussion here was to get them to watch a presentation, okay? Some of you guys know the story. I called Kevin and Sarah. I got through my five points discussion. Kevin was feeling it, Sarah wasn't. So I stopped, paused and said, let me send you some product, send them some product. Sarah turned around and within a week and was super excited about it. But a lot of people didn't even, I didn't need to send them product. In the first 50, because they were my hot list and people that I knew, a lot of them were like, yeah, I'll, I'll send it over. I'll take a look at it. I said, when can you watch it? I, I'm Listen, I, here's the deal. I, I have some key positions that are like oceanfront property. When they're gone, they're gone. I've got the people that choose, listen to this. I want you to hear this language. The people that choose to lock arms with me at this stage of the game are going to win. They're going to benefit tremendously over the next couple of years with what I'm about to go do. This will be the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. So I'm gonna send you this presentation. When can you watch it? Because I need you to text me back as soon as you've watched it, right? Sense of urgency. I need you to text me back as soon as you've watched it. So boom, they said they'd watch it. I put their name on the end process list, presentation sent. And I did that for the next couple of days. And then when I'd get on the follow, then I'd follow up with them and I'd say, what did you like best? Answered any questions they have, talk about the product a little bit. And then I'd say, listen, I'm filling these positions by Friday at noon. I've got 20 key positions. You're one of the first people I'm talking to. I've got a list of a couple hundred people I'm gonna be reaching out to over the next couple of weeks. You're one of the first people I reached out to. Do you want one of those key positions? Tell me yes, tell me no, tell me fast, cause I gotta go, I've got 99 more people to call. That was my posture. Like, I, look, tell me yes, tell me no. It, it's okay if you tell me no, but I got, I, I've got to go fill these by noon. I don't have time to chit chat. You know, we're not even going to, what, you know, just tell me yes, tell me, tell me if you're in or out. I had literally people go, I don't even know what this is, but I'm in. I can tell you're excited about this. Here's my credit card. Just call me later when things calm down and tell me what the heck I'm signing up for and what you're sending. So this translated to 21 or 22 uh, enrollments by Friday at noon, over 30 something in the first month. That translated to $35,000 in earnings in the first month, over 50,000 in earnings the second month. Because I went all in, because I went all in and I didn't dabble with this, I didn't just go, oh, let me put a few posts up and see if anybody responds to my posts. No, that's not how you launch a business. That's just a very small part of the overall process. This is how you launch a business. So my challenge for you guys is to consider where you want to be over the next 90 days. All right, over the next 90 days, you can completely change. It might not be 35 grand or 50 grand. I've been doing this 16 years. Don't pick, compare yourself to me. I've built a lot of relationships along the way. No, I didn't bring a team over here. I didn't hardly bring anybody from my last company over here. I started from scratch. But I busted my ass. I'm just going to say, I busted my butt when I launched this business. And you know what? It brought my plane to a certain altitude. 
And then, you know what? Now it's time to take it to the next altitude. So I'm doing this again. So if you guys see, I start sponsoring again, start putting new people into the business because I'm, I, I'm, I'm back in the zone. And so I'm challenging you guys to get back into the zone, get yourself back, get up, come up with a game plan. It's the end of the month, you know, finish it strong, but September, make yourself a commitment and say, I'm going to go run hard over the next 90 days. I'm going to do this. And, you know, do some type of variation of what we've talked about here. And let's go build this thing. Let's really go build this thing. I'm convinced that you can literally change your situation right out of the gate from the, over the next 90 days, you can change your entire stars. Might not be 35 grand, but what if you went 10, 15 grand in the next 30, 60 days? Would that make a difference? Would that help your story? So the next people you call and say, hey, look, this whole business on the side, working from home, made 15 grand already in the first four to six weeks. Do you want to come take a look at it? Do you think they might be more compelled to look at it at that point? So go create your story. Even if you've been in the business three to six months, some of you are going, I need to do this. I haven't done this yet. I've never done this, or I need to do it again. It's time. The next 90 months are going to be gold. 90 days are going to be gold. So um, I'm going to stop there. We've been over an hour. I think that's long enough for tonight. Um, first task that you gave your teammates I mean, that would be a whole nother training, but I would just say right out of the gate, same thing. Make names list, identify who your top 50 are. Let's get them in process as quickly as possible. Get excited, set some goals for yourself. Where do you want to be within your first week and your first month? Set a dot deadline for yourself. At the very least, let's go get you your first two so that you're qualified to start earning money. And let's get you to diamond as soon as possible. Giving them a kind of a game plan and a roadmap. So, um, that's it. Sarah, I'm turning it back over to you. Thank you so much, Travis. I, I know we've done this a couple of times with people and it's just something that I really wanted to bring to the team to see, because I know that our comp plan isn't easy to talk about. And I hope that all of you guys feel a lot more confident after tonight. I do, if you don't mind, want to give us five minutes just to open it up for questions and then we'll wrap it up here. So if you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to unmute yourself. Speechless. I think you left everybody speechless. Silence the crowd. Stephanie has her hand up. Go ahead, Stephanie. Yes. Um, were most of the people that you signed up at first diamonds to be able to make all that yeah. money? So I, I put so much urgency. In fact, if you want to know my, my hot market, I told them if they wanted one of those positions, they have to buy a diamond back. <laughs> and then if they said they couldn't, then I would have a private conversation with them and we would talk, say, okay, if you can at least do 600 and commit to me that you'll upgrade to diamond in the next 90 days, then we'll talk. But you understand that because of my energy and my momentum of what I did, it created kind of shockwaves through the organization. So Kevin and Sarah came in and they put in, I don't know, 30 people in their first month. So now my group commissions kicked in right out of the gate. And when you start seeing diamonds come in like that, but we were putting in mostly 600s in diamonds and occasionally you get somebody who can't do that and they can't do it. That's okay. But I, I really create a lot of value in these positions here. And I just, I, I mean, I remember telling one of my friends, look, is Bob Gunnels his name. I said, Bob, listen, if you want one of these key positions it's going to cost you $3,000. But I will promise you that the people that choose to lock arms with me here are going to win big. He said, say no more. Here's my credit card. You had me at hello, put, put it in. He was one of those guys that just said, I'll just do this. So yeah, I put in probably out of the, I don't know, 30 plus that I enrolled, I would say half of them were diamonds in the beginning. But it was because I built so much value around the urgent. It wasn't like I'm talking to a, only people with money or this, or it was just, I created so much value around what I was doing and about to do that people were just on that contagious enthusiasm. I see Jenny has a question. Did um, before we go on, Stephanie, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Awesome, Jenny, go ahead. Hi, Travis. Thank you so much for your time. Um, <clears throat> the training was awesome. Took lots of notes. Um, one of the questions I have is, as you got your teammates, um, what is what is the best advice that you can give us starting out when we get the first few teammates? How do we support them? What's the best way we can support them to get them going as quick as possible and as right to the top? 
Well, I think it's important that you you meet them where they are. Some people, you, you, you walk with the people that want to walk, you run with the people that want to run. You never try to be too pushy um, or, you know, we are, this is a tricky business that we're in because it's a volunteer army, right? It's not, you can't mandate performance. You can only inspire it. That's something you should write down. You can't mandate performance here. You can only inspire it. How do you inspire it? Through your own actions, right? So anytime that I notice that the organization slows down, I can either get on and start trying to squeeze lemons and try to, you know, try and get the team to go start to, or guess what? I just start focusing on my recruiting and guess what? Every time I do that and new blood starts coming in, what happens? Everybody starts picking up the pace too. So, but to answer your question more specifically about like, what do I do? I, I like a getting started meeting or a, a um, getting started orientation or training with your new team members where you're meeting with them. And the first thing that you're finding out is just what are their objectives? What are their expectations? Because they, their expectations need to meet their, um, if they have an expectation to make 10 grand a month, but they're, then they have to be willing to put a list together that's bigger than 30 names, right? So they have to meet. So I need to understand what their expectations are, what their goals are. And also I wanna know that is, is, is what they're expecting realistic, what's gonna make it worthwhile? Five minutes. And um, ultimately, you know, once I know what they want to accomplish, it helps me to start putting a game plan in place for them. From there, what I do is, is I'll start coaching them on some strategies on social media. I want to just help them to understand what, it, what a curiosity post might sound like, let people know that they've gotten involved with something, but don't tell them what it is yet. You know, let people know that they found a way to be able to stay at home and make some extra money and you're excited about it, but don't say what it is yet. Creating curiosity, getting people coming to you on social media, but the most important thing of us teaching them how to start reaching out to people and putting them in process, going through that process, role playing with them, giving them some 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 goal or some 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 goal, um, not only how tos but then some goals, right? So let's set some goals for the week. If you're a mentor, at the end of every single conversation that you're having with your team members, ask set a goal, it's a challenge, give them a challenge. Hey, listen. So what's the goal for the week? What's your, I'm going to challenge you to talk to at least five people a day between now and Friday. Do you think that you can do that? So that's kind of the stuff I'm doing with people that are brand new is just finding out what their goals are based on what their expectations are. We're going to put kind of a game plan and a strategy in place. that's kind of similar to this. And I will tell you that, you know, Jim Rohn used to do a training called duck and Eagle school. And it was kind of like the best way to, to, to see whether you've got a duck or an Eagle is, is giving them an assignment and see if they complete the assignment and see if they go execute or not. So part of me kind of giving them some things to work on, like, hey, put together the names list, text me as soon as you're done with that. Let's, you know, okay, great. Now, now let's work on moving. Like, do you think we can get 10 people in process today? Let's role play and let's meet again tomorrow. And let's just have a conversation about how that went and what, where you got stuck or what were some of the challenges. And let's talk about that. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm doing in the early stages. My goal is, is to get them out of the nest within 30 days. But within 30 days, they should to at the very least, maybe not do a presentation in front of a whole group yet. They might not have that level of confidence, but to do a one-on-one -on -one presentation with a PowerPoint, to know where they can find the resources and rapid funnel, which is another thing I'm having them do. I'm having them watching, getting started trainings that we have in our, in our guides and our, in our mentoring library, all of those things. Those are things that I'm doing with them in the beginning. Did that answer your question, Jenny? Awesome. If we don't, I'll, one more question. Otherwise we're going to wrap it up here. No, I'm going to stop recording.